Oh, you dropped my keys. I'm sorry, I'm bad at catch. This is so much like real life, I hate it. <laughs> but I love it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kimchika and we are doing another First Impressions gameplay demo. This demo is called Forgotten Fields and it is um, by developer Frostwood Interactive and published by Dino Digital. And this game is one about an author, a struggling author, going back to their home and um, sort of revisiting memories before their home is sold off. So very nostalgic. It seems like it's going to be a really uh, reflective game and I'm excited to see where the demo takes us. So let's jump in and see. I'm already really digging the color palette uh, and the music. So, and it looks like it's live now on Kickstarter. So that's really exciting. Um, I'll have to check the dates to see really fast. All right, so I just checked and the demo will, or the Kickstarter is live until July 15th. So again, this is a game, if you're watching this and you end up being interested, uh, please do check out that Kickstarter and support, support the team. So let's jump in and play. The story begins with a girl, but she is no ordinary girl. She has a gift a gift that bestows magic upon her, far beyond her own comprehension. One fateful day, her gift is taken away. Her gift is removed? She loses her gift? <sighs> this isn't interesting at all. Come on, Sid, you can do this. What am I looking for? Senshut, an inconsolable yearning for something one cannot explain or does not know. Oh, wow. I hope that they continue to give us words like that. Um, there's a website that I once followed that had unique words in other languages that expressed feelings or nuances that we don't have in the English language. And that very much just took me back to that website. Okay, let's make some tea. <laughs> I don't read as much as I used to. Maybe that's the problem. Note to self, read more. I know that feeling. Oftentimes, I'm like, oh, I should be consuming a lot of other content besides just games, because then that can expand what I think about and do with games in general, and then I just play games, which isn't that bad, but... All right, examine desk. Look at Bill. Oh, that's not fun. Let's not look at that. That's not fun either. Your current balance. Ooh. Ooh, that is rough. Okay, let's exit. Look at bookcase. We already did that. All right, I guess we should get to work. Let's turn on the computer. Not yet. I need to be fresh and awake first. Oh, I mean, I had tea. Is there, maybe I could take a shower. Wash my face. There we go. Yeah, that's a good thing. Just like clean up a little bit. That helps morale a lot. Go to the bathroom. Take a shower. <laughs> think, think, think. Oh, I like that in the corner, that think, think, think. It's kind of how it is in showers, isn't it? You go in and you try to relax, but sort of in that back of your mind, it can be kind of hard to escape the thing that's maybe bothering you. Oh, email. Okay, so let's see, maybe I'll use my mouse for that too. Uh, Sam at Strangeland Books. Oh my gosh, probably my publisher or agent. Any progress? New ideas? Ah, hey, how's it going tonight? Done with the grant application? Remember, deadline is tonight. A short, decent summary of the book idea will do. Let me know if you need any help. Ugh, the short summaries are often the hardest thing to, to figure out. Trying to encompass everything in just a few words. Hey Sam, not yet. I'm just not feeling inspired by anything at all. I've tried forcing myself to write something mechanically for the application, but it's so bad and uninspiring that it wouldn't even get selected for the grant. 
Plus, I don't have any ideas in mind for the story except who it's about and how it starts. And then I descend into cliches. I've scrapped a lot of ideas because nothing's good enough to be selected, but I have today, and I'm relying on pre-stress deadline, pre-deadline stress to lead to a burst of inspiration. Wish me luck. Oh, that's never good. But again, highly relatable. I understand. I don't want to look at my taxes. Okay, that makes sense. Internet? <sighs> All right, so my tabs are view units sold, royalties earned for Tower of Yesterday. So it looks like this might be my initial book that I released um, in 2019. So that's a, and it's between April and August, so not a very long time. We sold a max of about 1,500 units in, at some point in like maybe mid or late April. And the long tail doesn't look too great. Um, looks like pretty much we are at no sales now. Uh, let's X out of that. Oh, wait, no, I wanted to look at the other tabs. Riding from market, how to ride what sells while maintaining creative freedom. Oh my goodness, I have definitely got done Google searches like that where I'm like, I'm just gonna Google what I'm looking for and hopefully something inspires me. A late 20s realization, is this it? Too real? Oh my gosh, okay, so I won't read this whole thing, but I can see through skimming it, it's the idea of like in your 20s, you had this idea of perhaps you know, you're graduated from college, you'll have jobs and things are stable, but then now that you're stable, you're thinking like, what's what's next? Um, I think this part makes, I'll read this out loud. What happened, do you think? Who decided it was a good idea to front load life with all the excitement and possible new experiences? It's hard to agree with that. In your first 30 years, you experience all the excitement or terror of going to school, making friends, having your first kiss, falling in love for the first time, driving your first car, getting drunk, navigating education, starting a career, discovering your true calling, getting married, and having children. You get what I mean. But from this point on, looks like you have one task. Maintenance. Now it's your job to maintain everything you've built so far, every day for the rest of your life. It's obvious, right? Or is it? Oh, that's real talk. Um, it's kind of interesting because I, I feel like I have started a lot of things late in life. Um, I started dancing late in life in my late 20s. I started being in the games industry in my late 20s. Um, and so I had that sense of excitement at that point um, and uncertainty, but I can see how I can see how once you kind of get settled into a tree it's like, is this going to be it? But that's why it's important to maybe find ways to not settle into a routine. Okay. All right. Let's try and get this new book summary going. Um, okay. I need to flesh out a character. I'll start with some notes. How have I not figured this out yet? Why is this so hard all of a sudden? Okay. Stop the girl. Focus on the girl. All right, so what is she like? Ooh, okay, and I can pick shy but intelligent, clumsy but brave and charismatic. <laughs> Every anime character out there. A terrible talker but super stealthy. I kinda like that. <laughs> Let's try that. Terrible talker, super stealthy. She's literally a shadow. If this story had elves, they'd be taking lessons from her. Hmm. Should I add elves? She won't be able to talk her way out of every situation in this story, though. <sighs> it's kind of rubbish. Okay, let's try some plot notes for the opening. Act one. So yesterday we decided it starts when she's at home. Ooh, or outside. It's peaceful, serene, she's happy. Okay, next we need to establish her status quo and her magical powers. She loves these powers. We need more about what they mean to her. Although if she's grown up, with them. Maybe she doesn't re realize how special it is. She can't even imagine a life without them. We see her immersed in magic as she plays with um, flower petals. Yes, she's one with nature. Fresh, beautiful, full of the joys of spring. The grass is lush, swaying, serene, swishing. Flowers dot the ground around her. To her left is... 
Ooh, let's say a tower or an old shrine. I'm gonna say an old shrine. A mysterious shrine. Its history is lost to time, but she's always felt her magic grow stronger around it. And to her right, a tower. She fondly remembers playing there as a kid. And she's surrounded by tall trees. Oops. She's always felt a strange attraction to the forest. There's a mystery and comfort for her in nature. This feeling has always been ex inexplicable. No, ineffable. Mm. Her powers grew stronger here, though she never knew why. Okay, so we've shown she's got magic, she loves her powers, and things are nice and peaceful. Now we need two things, her wants and the main conflict. Let's start with um, her wants. So the first thing she wants is to get her magical powers back because she will now lose in the upcoming inciting incident. Something else, a sort of subplot, a strange kind of yearning she's been feeling lately, a sort of nostalgia for a place she's never been, an attraction to somewhere she can't quite explain. She's been seeing sudden glimpses of this place in her mind. It's calling to her. She wants to know more to reach this place somehow. But, hmm, I'll come back to this later. Okay, let's go to, we should have started maybe with the conflict because that will influence maybe what she wants. The conflict is that there's some sort of dark force that's been looking for her. She's oblivious to this. She has no reason to think her life might be in danger. But as we're going to need an inciting incident, she needs to get away from here and find someone. There's so much she has yet to understand about herself and everything that's happening. On this blissful day, it happens, or ooh, on this fateful day, it happens. While she's out in the woods, her village is attacked. She hears the screams of chaos and death. She stands up and says, These sounds, something's not right. They're coming from... She runs. Oh. Oh, I can run. Oh my gosh. I really am enjoying how we're in the mind of the author and seeing how this story is unfolding. Um, even though we know that the author is really struggling to try and figure out what to write for this, this task. She walks slowly towards her home. The place she grew up, the place where her aunt and uncle raised her, her home, is burning. She rushes towards it, preparing to use her magic to put the fire out, and, 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 oh, I need a break. So tired. I'm going to lie down for a bit. Wow. That was really cool, the way that they sort of immersed us in this artistic process of you have these ideas, you see them start forming, you see them like becoming something, and then like you hit that wall and you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, I can't say I've had that experience necessarily with writing, because that's not an art medium that I personally gravitate towards, but I can tell you that with choreography, that's something that I've absolutely had where you, know, you have these stints of just absolute inspiration and you're like, I can do no wrong. I Everything I make is amazing. And then you have these moments or periods, <laughs> not just moments, like days and weeks where you're like, what is this? What am I doing with my life? Or am I doing something differently? Have I just changed too much? That feeling. Has it finally left me? Oh, dang. Whoa. First person? What? Okay, let's walk towards this. What is this? Pull from. No. What? Oh, I was so close. I'm coming. God. Okay. Oh, why can't you just ring the bell once? Uh, why can't you say things like, hi, AJ, instead? So mean. Aren't you supposed to be at work? Mm, it's a Sunday, dude. Oh, right. Now I was on my way to Sarah's place. Don't know what's up with her, man. She's been acting real weird lately. 
Anyway, your mom called over and asked me to give you, oh, where did I put it? Give you this, a letter. Hey, letters are personal, man. You should appreciate the effort. Oh, she wants me to come home for dinner? Why do you sound so upset? Because, you know, Sid, that's the problem with you. You don't appreciate what other people do for you. <laughs> like me, coming all the way out here to give you your letters and and drink my beer. Hey, come on. Wait, shh. Dear Siddharth, your friend AJ was kind enough to take some time off from his errands and get this letter to you. <laughs> I wanted to invite you for dinner tonight at home. As you know, the deal has almost been finalized. We're signing the agreement tomorrow. So I thought this would be a good chance for you to say goodbye to the place you grew up in. Oh, wow. I've also invited some of your dearest friends for the dinner. It should be good fun. Oh, and would you be a dear and pick up some important papers for tomorrow's agreement from Uncle George's house? See you tonight. Love, Mom. Oh, man. I've got to go home for a dinner party. Oh, man. As one of the esteemed guests to said party, I find this highly inappropriate and offensive. Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of here, man. When was the last time you saw sunlight? Speaking of which, why the hell are your lights off? Oh, it helps with my riding. I need it to be dark, mood setting. Oh yeah, looking real productive in here. At least open the curtains, man. <laughs> Stop messing with my curtains. Gotta finish writing the summary for the grant application. When's the deadline? Midnight, tonight. Actually, it's more like 2 a.m. Time zones and all. Nah, that's plenty of time, man. You can finish it up after the party. I could if I knew what I was going to write. I don't even have any half-decent ideas that I could cobble together and summit, submit. You're a creative guy. You'll think of something. I've been trying to think of something for the past few months. I don't know if I can, still can. Things have been feeling different for a while now. No, that's okay. This kind of is just for some bonus money, right? You don't really need it. Do I look like I don't need money? Okay, maybe not. So what are you going to do then? You're still going to go tonight? I have to. Mom's arranged everything and she's already called everyone. It's the last day in the house and all. I can't really not go. Plus, I've got to take these papers for the house too, from Ethan's dad. The best thing I can do is get there fast, try writing something before the party starts. Maybe stress will get the ideas flowing. Hey, it might even be fun. When was the last time you were at your old place? Been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, but I don't really care about the house that much any. Hey, you definitely use a break. And you really need to get out of this place. How can you sit in front of a computer all day, man? I just don't get it. Too real. Too real. I can literally see cobwebs forming around you as we speak. Okay, geez. I caught it, man. I'm coming, aren't I? Sorry, it's just this dark room. Got me a little worked up, you know? Anyways, look like you don't really have a choice about tonight. So cheer up. It'll be fun, I promise. It's been so long since we were all together. Man, you live right above Rohan. If I were living here, I'd be meeting him every day, at least. All right, I gotta go meet Sarah. Hopefully it's nothing and I'm just imagining things. She's probably sick of you. And now I'm on my way to ruin her Sunday. Shit, that'll make it do. All right, see you, man. I'll tell you how it went later tonight. Good luck. Oh, I'll think of some sore ideas for you, bye. <laughs> oh man, work. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. Oh, listen, I know you really need the money, but don't place too much importance and pressure on it. That's just not going to help. Well, I... <laughs> Easier said than done, my friend. Even if you don't get this, we'll find something else to fund you. Don't make this do or die because that'll definitely dry you up. But also good advice. How long has it been since you went outside? Did something else? Take your mind off this for a while. Go take a walk outside. Many great artists, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Bergman, made long hour, hour long walks as part of their daily routines. I know you don't want to hear this, but you need to. Good luck. I'll be in touch later again this evening and we can finish off and submit the application. You know, Sam, I appreciate you. You are a good editor. I do need to get out of this place. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go outside. It looks like a sunny day. I should also take my own advice, huh? Oh, wow. See, I would be outside if it was this kind of weather. It's not. 
Not here, not in Oregon. <laughs> it's funny, I've always kind of envied people who have childhood homes like, like this character does. Um, that's something I never really had growing up. Like we moved every two years, ever since I can remember, um, because my dad was in the military. And so it's interesting playing this character who, like I think when he said, he was like, I don't feel an attachment to my home anymore. And it was funny because I remember always being jealous of people who have that because I actually didn't have attachment to a lot of places. Um, and so yeah, it's just kind of interesting. It's gonna be a long journey. I'll need my trusty scooter. Use right trigger to run. All right. Hey! -o. All right. Now, nah, rent's not due for a few more days. I'll talk to Rohan then. Oh, it has been a while since we hung out. Eh, I don't want to interrupt his Sunday. Best just to be on my way. Rohan sounds like he maybe is a former closer friend or a part of a friend group. Uh. <laughs> I think that's interesting. I often can have the tendency to think about like, oh, I don't want to interrupt or be a bother to folks. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to wait to like reach out for whatever reason. And um, seeing this character say that, I'm like, oh, but why don't you just say hi? Like if that takes two seconds. It couldn't be that much of a bother. An old man lives here. It's just him and his wife, I think. Can't be sure. I really can't see this house from my window. Everyone has an Active-O scooter. Hey, they weren't wrong with those early ads. We sure love an Active-O around here. All right, so let me get on my scooter and let's let's ride. Also, what is this? It's been over, it's been here over a year and I don't know if this house is a house or a storage shed. I've never seen anyone go in or out here. Hmm, interesting. I like that we're at the end of this cul-de-sac area. That's kind of nice. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Come on. Come on, little scooter. Oh, man. Damn, so much for being a trusty old bike. Oi, Sid. What are you doing outdoors? Oh, hey, Rohan. Stupid bike won't start. <laughs> are you heading home for the party already? Yeah, man, I've got work to do. Planning for a grant. The deadline's today, so I'm going early so I can get it done. Well, a busted bike isn't going to help with that. I'd give you a lift. It'd be fun to go on a road trip again. It's been a while. But I got scuba classes today. Nah, no worries, man. Wait, what? Scuba what? I'll tell you about it later. Come on, let's see what's up with your bike. Okay, first things first. Try turning it on. Okay. Oh. Alright, now, have you gotten enough fuel? Uh, yeah. Mmm, probably not. It's empty. Mmm, can't trust the gauge, though. Check in the fuel tank to see if it's really empty. All right, let's open that seat up. And, boop. Yep, there's enough in there. It's at least half full. Oh, it could be the battery then. Oh, try the horn. Oh, man, I want a little scooter. Which one's the horn? This one? Ha! Ink! So the battery's fine? Yep, looks like the spark plug's gone. Oh, uh, should I take the bus then? Oh, God, I hate taking the bus. <laughs> now nah, we'll work it out. The spark plug probably needs cleaning. You know, if you took your bike out regularly, it'd run better. You should come last Sunday with AJ and me. You live right upstairs, but I barely see you anymore. You've been here about a year, and we've all got together, what, like thrice? Yeah, yeah, I know. But I can't enjoy myself on a trip when my mind's on work. Oh, man, this is so real. I am that person. Oh, You need to leave all that behind you, man. You'll bring yourself out. I mean, when you wrote your first book, we were out almost every weekend. Yeah, but this time it feels different. Everyone's busy with their own lives. They've got commitments. It's not carefree like before. It wasn't carefree even back then, man. Something's always going on. I feel like trying to recapture how good that time was might actually spoil the memory. No, man, it's still amazing. Every time. It, it hasn't lost its charm, if that's what you mean. We're not trying to relive anything. It's just making more of it in the present. I'm so glad tonight's happening. Yeah, I guess. That was all three years ago, wasn't it? Those weekend trips when I was writing my first book? Yeah, bloody hell. I guess it was. I never thought about it. Feels just like last year. 
time flies. It's scary, really. That's what I'm saying. Come with us. It won't be those days that way. It'll be these days. <laughs> You've got a point. All right, then let's fix this bike. Oh, I loaned my tools to Mr. Jacobs. Who? Mr. Jacobs, the old man next door. Oh, never met him. Well, this is your chance. Go say hi. All right, fine. Wow, that's real though. That idea of not getting so lost and hung up on your work. I can very, I very much need to work on that. Uh, Mr. Jacobs? Yes? I, uh, can I borrow? I mean, Rohan said you had his tools, so I wondered, and who the hell are you? I am, I'm Sid. I actually live above. <laughs> I know you kid, you're our kid. I'm messing with you. Sure, sure. Take the tools. They're my scooter storage. You'll need the keys, of course. Here, catch! <gasps> Left bumper! Oh, you dropped my keys! I'm sorry, I'm bad at catch. This is so much like real life. I hate it. <laughs> but I love it. You threw them! Ugh, how are you gonna survive old age, son? Not as an athlete, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, got the tools. Should head back to my scooter now. Wait, do I need to give back the keys? Press right stick to open inventory. Oh, okay. I guess uh, I'll take your keys then. I'll keep them here. Or I'll leave them in the scooter, maybe. Okay, let's get you back on the road. Pop the seat for me. All right. Oh, do I have to... See these bolts? Open them up. All right, so I'm going to... Transition, I was using my gamepad, but I think I'm going to use my mouse and keyboard first. Okay, so we're going to unscrew these. Oh, great. I need to take a look at the engine. All right, can you pull out the plug wire? Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Relax, it's simple stuff. <laughs> it's like, this is the wire you must pull. All right, that's the spark plug, take it out. Okay, good job, give it to me and I'll clean it up. Hold on for a second though, take a break. What's the grant you mentioned? Uh, I'm pitching a story for it. Basically some money I can live off of while I write my next book. Oh, that's awesome, Sid. Not awesome, I can't think of anything. Hmm, still uninspired, huh? It's like I'm a different person, man. Maybe it's my memory. It's failing and I've forgotten how to do this thing. Nah, chance. No chance. This is who you are. It'll come sooner or later. Sometimes I wonder if I should have gotten a regular job. Nah, dude, are you crazy? This thing you're doing right now is so right for you. Probably, plus you'd probably lose your mind to get fired on the second day. Definitely. But it'd also be nice to, you know, say own and live in a place of my own too, for instance. You saved my life renting me the upstairs place so cheap, but you know what I'm saying, right? I get it. It's not like I bought this place or anything, right? It's a family property. It'll all come, man. You'll make it big. Just stick with it. As long as I can support myself while loving what I do. At the moment, it's kind of neither. Honestly, I'd take any one of those two. Shit's gotta be at least worth it. Anyways, back to the present. What's next for the scooter? Okay, well, we should replace the oil. There's some in my truck over near the fields. Don't forget the funnel. I'll put the spark plug back while you get it. Okay, so... Truck. Here we go. Take the oil. And... Oh! <gasps> oh my gosh, this is so beautiful! Like, there's this whole beautiful field. And these trees, it's like we started in this small, unlit apartment, and now, it, like, I should be outside walking and experiencing this world. Oh, we're back in a first-person view. Oh, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, can I somehow jump onto... Oh! To throw. Oh my gosh, ha! Huh? Just 
just threw a house. Ha! Goodbye, house. So long, I don't need you. I just need a job that I like. Annette. And we're gonna jump off with it. Ah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is trippy. All right, let's see if we jump off this way. We can jump. I just wanna jump onto that thing. Okay, first let me run and check. Is this the right side? Aha, here we go. Woo! Oh. That was fun. What is this? I don't know. Maybe it won't open. Open! Open, says me! Oh! Whoa. Wow. That's beautiful. Go in. This is like the house in the story that I imagined. Whoa. Maybe, oh, maybe I can put those on the other side and like roll them into that like golf ball area. <laughs> maybe this is a mini golf course, huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, it reset them. Oh, wait, let's try this one. Can we mini golf you over as well? There you go. Nothing changed over there. So maybe, yeah, maybe we have to mini golf these. Ah, there we go. Something changed. Ha. Maybe flame goes on this one now. Okay, this is a little bit wonky. The camera is a little bit shaky. <laughs> a bit sensitive. Okay, wait, no. Oh no, you're trapped on the other side of the fence. Okay, I have to be careful. I think every time I turn, it seems to want to let the ball go. So I have to be very cautious. Oh, I'm stuck on something. Ah! Okay. All right. Oh. Well, this is, no. No! I didn't want this. No! Oh. Oh my gosh, I'm brainstorming. This is my story. Ah! Okay, I went outside and I had this brilliant moment of some sort of inspiration. Hmm. What was I here for? Oh, right, the oil and funnel. Got it. Hey, Rohan, I came up with an idea. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're fix the scooter though. Beautiful. Now, put the funnel in and I'll pour the oil. Okay. So we've got the funnel. And let's use that. <laughs> That's a nice sound. Okay. And we're done. That was fun, wasn't it? I won't lie, it was nice to actually get something done for once. Where are you going now? You said you had a class? Oh yeah, so I've started taking scuba diving lessons. That's pretty cool. Where did that come from? Well, I've got plans. Uh-oh. No, hey listen man, I've been planning it out all this time. I'm just sick of my job. Event management is bullshit. There are way more late night parties than I expected. It's messed up my sleep, I work up at odd work at odd times of the day, and I barely get to see my own wife anymore. 
Plus, it's so shallow. I mean, it was fun for a while, but I can't keep living like this forever, you know? It feels kind of meaningless. I want to do something that fulfills me. I mean, look at you. No, no, don't look at me. And I've always loved the ocean. Diving something I've always wanted to try out, so I thought, why not consider it professionally? That definitely sounds cool. Just do your research before you dive in. I stopped myself from saying that. <laughs> That's criminal. <laughs> well, all right. I look forward to hearing about the big plan tonight. Anyways, I'll give Mick Mr. Jacobs his keys and be on my way. All right. I like this. I like that I like that his friend is showing Sid that there are other options. Like you don't have to keep doing something because it's convenient. You don't have to keep doing something because uh, you you chose it, right? There's always an opportunity, you know. I mean, obviously there's it can take time, it can take planning, but there are ways that you can shift maybe what you have going on. Whoa, no need to come all that way. Just toss him to me. What, seriously? Toss him. It's the only exercise I get anymore. Oh god, oh god. All right! Oh. Well, all right, I'll see you at the party tonight. Wait, what? You're invited too? Yeah, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Have fun, kid. See you around. Maybe. I like you. Keeping me on my toes, even though we've never talked. All right, time to go. Oh, hey, congrats on fi your mom finding a buyer for the house, too. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I really love that place. We all did. You spent pretty much your whole life there. So many great memories. That place almost feels like a time capsule. But life goes on. Sid? No. She tries to put out the flames with her powers. But they're gone. She sees her uncle, who raised her as his own, laying outside, gravely injured. She runs to him. Oh no. Uncle, I came as soon as I could. W what happened here? Don't worry about me, he gasped. You must go. It's not safe for you here. Wait, but why? We don't have time. You have to find. There's an old mage that lives in the ancient woods. You need to find him. Only he can help you. Travel west for three days, and in the ancient woods you will find his home at the edge of the cliff. You must leave at once. I, I can't leave you. The village is burning. I can help. No, you do not understand. Listen to me. You must go, or far worse will befall us. This was coming for a long time. You do not know who you are, but now is the time to do. <sighs> Kill me. Do what you must. You must go. She was scared. She'd lived here for as long as she could remember. All of a sudden, she had to leave everything she knew behind and take on a dangerous journey. She wished time would stop. Frustrated and desperate to save her way of life, she tries using her magic again to stop the fire. Your magic, it will not work. Go to the mage. He knows why. These visions that you keep seeing, he knows of those too. How did you know about the visions? This has been a long time coming. We tried to prepare, but you don't know who you are, child. Please listen to me. These visions, these flashes of a place she didn't know but felt intensely drawn to, they had been peering for her, to her for years. Now she had a chance to find out what they really meant. We'll be fine. It's not us they want. They're after you. Please go at once. Oh, dang. So what I... Oh my gosh, these moments show that he, him being outside, interacting with others and like, and starting to grapple with his own perhaps sadness and nostalgia about whether or not he realizes it about the house being sold and, and essentially his whole childhood kind of being passed on to someone else in the, uh, the physical version or the physical representation of his childhood being passed on. Um, it's affecting Sid more than they're letting on. Sid, hello? You there? Sorry, just a sec. Dying uncle tells her she must find an old mage in the ancient woods. Sends her on a quest. Hey. Sorry, I had an idea for the book. Had to write it down or I'd forget it. That's awesome! You're getting ideas! 
Nah, it's just the basics. Nothing inspiring. As I was saying, your mom had the right idea to get us all together at the house for a party one last time. You know, you haven't been there for a while. Yeah. Listen, I really should be on my way now. Oh yeah, sorry man. The application, right? Just haven't talked properly in so long, you know? Tonight then. Thanks for helping with the bike, too. Nah, no trouble. See you later. Oh. <gasps> on the road again. Bye. <laughs> there we go. I'm so excited. Ah, I'm on my scooter. <gasps> so beautiful. Oh, no, I wanted to see more of the fields, more of the environment. Oh, Frostwood Interactive. Pretty. Okay, so we live on an island, it looks like. Or at least a coastal town. It's beautiful. I wonder where this is based or where this is inspired by. It looks, again, it looks like... Um, more tropical island, but I'm not sure where. Or again, this is, looks more expansive than an island. Maybe it's a, just a tropical location. Forgotten Fields, oh! Wow. This kind of reminds me of New Zealand a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, from when I visited. Oh, wow. Oh, dang it! I was like, are they letting us play? Oh my goodness. Thank you for playing the Forgotten Fields demo. We're currently running a Kickstarter campaign to fund the game to ensure that Forgotten Fields releases in the best possible state later this year. If possible, your support would be super helpful. You can also give feedback about the demo here. And there's a Twitter account, Frostword underscore interactive and their Kickstarter campaign, which again ends in mid-July. So um, you do have time to continue to contribute to this um, if you're listening when this video comes out. Um, and if not, absolutely wishlist the game. It's on Steam. Um, I don't know if it's planned for other platforms or going to be elsewhere, but um, wow, what a beautiful demo. I'm really looking forward to this because they do a great job of showing and not telling. Um, a lot of games, especially ones that are telling stories that are more emotional and... Um, Kind of touch on these themes of like uh looking back into your past and being reflective and i think a lot of them are a lot more explicit when they tell you like this is how i feel and this is why i'm sad um and that's not necessarily like a bad thing but the fact that this game has really hit that chord without sid necessarily being like i don't know how to feel about my mom selling my childhood home. Um, I think they do a great job of, of showing and not telling you how to feel because the feelings are there. Like you, you feel that in the first person sections, which again, it's a little, it's unpolished, it's a demo. So there are these like smaller elements that I would say like, okay, I hope they smooth little things over. But as far as the way that they're telling the story, this is lovely. <laughs> this is really beautiful. Um, and perhaps I'm thinking that especially because it's something like Sid is a character I find myself relating to a lot because I tend to be the kind of person who, uh, especially as I'm, as I mentioned, I transitioned into the things that I do late in life, I would consider later in life. Um, there's that need to just like, oh, you got to be really good at it or you got to put so much time into it because you didn't do it sooner. Um, and so the fact that Sid is talking about, hey, like I've been holed up in my apartment for so long working um, and the friends being like, hey, we haven't seen you a bit. Like, how are you? We miss you. I think that's something that I can, I can <laughs> unfortunately relate to. Um, so I think that also kind of struck a chord with me personally playing this demo, which is 
it's exciting to see games address things like that. So yeah, that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please again, go follow this studio, follow the game, donate to their Kickstarter if you are, are able to and are inclined to. And if you enjoyed this video and other videos on this channel, which focus on indie games and featuring them so that you can hopefully find a game that you enjoy, please consider liking the channel or finding me on Twitch. Uh, I stream at twitch.tv slash Kimchika and uh, also highlighting indie games there too. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and that you're finding lots of indie games to play and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.